Hi everyone, it's Lynn from Mutiny Ranch, and I am here today to talk about the cracked key method of hydroponics. And I don't want you to be intimidated by this because it is probably the simplest form of hydroponics out there. Um, a lot of people call it, call it passive hydroponics, and it's kind of a um, one-time setup and uh, forget it almost type thing. So I'm gonna go over a few things that I use to make it really a simple method. Um, and I'll show you uh, what I've migrated to. If you're new to the channel, I have a farm animal rescue here. We have two potbelly pigs and I am trying to grow some of the food that they eat. They love to have lettuce and it's great filler for them. I love to have lettuce and salads. Um, it just becomes super expensive when you're going through, you know, two or three or four heads of lettuce a day. So if I can grow it here year round, that's fantastic. I live in Southwest Colorado. It is currently 32 degrees out. We had snow last night and uh, it gets down into the single digits. So growing indoors is something that I have to do if I want to have lettuce year round. Um, and in the summer it gets too hot for lettuce. So we have a, a small window of time that I can grow lettuce outdoors, at least that I've been able to figure out. <laughs> um, and, and this is just so super simple that uh, I don't know that I wanna even attempt to grow more lettuce outside year round when this works just fine. Um, it's also relatively inexpensive to set up. You can almost use anything that you have around the house that can hold water. I started off using mason jars to grow lettuce. Um, this is a quart sized jar and this is a pint sized jar and these are regular mouth. So most of us love the wide mouth jars. Um, these are regular mouth and I got those because the little cups that you use, these are called net cups, the little cups that you use to um, hold the plant and suspend it uh, above water. These are two inch net cups and they fit perfectly in the regular mouth. So if you have a wide mouth jar, these will fall right through. So regular mouth or small mouth, whatever you want to call these, um, these two inch net cups fit right inside without falling through. One thing that I have learned over the two years of growing now is although the pint jars will work, they are very small. They have obviously a small reservoir for holding water and um, cracky is supposed to be really hands off. So the idea is that you would put your water in and some nutrients to feed your plant and your, and your plant inside and basically just let it go. Um, you wouldn't need to change out any fluids, you wouldn't need to top them off uh, in, during their growing cycle, but with these small jars, what I found is the plant uses up the water so quickly that you really have to be on top of checking them and topping off the water or nutrients or both. Also, um, these sit under grow lights. Anytime you have water under lights, you're probably gonna get some algae growing. And so these need to be blacked out. So the darker, the better. A lot of people just paint these. One of the reasons I have now migrated to a different system or different container is that I was wrapping my jars in brown paper and just taping it on there. And that worked great to keep the sunlight out or the, the grow lights out um, with minimal algae growth. But every single time I had to, peel the tape off, take the paper off, wash out my jars, which one of the bad things about a small neck or regular mouth jar is that they're not as easy to wash as a wide mouth. It just became a pain. You know, then I'd have to rewrap with the brown paper and then sometimes I'd have to just start all over. The, the tape had torn the paper enough that I'd have to get different paper and wrap it all over again. I have heard people use socks. So you could go to the thrift store and get dark, dark colored socks or maybe you have a stash of them that are mismatched or have holes in the toes and you can slide each jar into a sock and that works too. And then you just pop the sock off when you need to wash it. So there are ways around it if you really wanna use your mason jars. And you know, it's a nice way because it's a glass material. A lot of people prefer to use glass over plastic and that's just simply up to you if you have a bunch of these laying around. An additional reason that I use the mason jars was I just felt like if I didn't like growing lettuce this way, I would still have a jar that I could use for canning, but between our hard water and the nutrients, it um, etched the glass, so I cannot use these for canning anymore. So that's jars. What I have moved to are 
plastic shoe boxes. There's six quarts each, so that's the six of these is how much water <laughs> goes in here. So, so the bonus side of this is they're much easier to clean. This lid just pops right off and then you just clean out the container and you're good to go to start all over again. So super easy to clean and it holds much more water and nutrients so there's less maintenance to it. So you, you don't have to um, top the water off very often depending on your climate and how warm your house is or wherever you're growing but that's what I've moved to. Um, I also have, you can see here, my neck cups and neck cups come in a variety of sizes and these are from two different companies and you can probably see the height difference here. Um, these are the CZ brand and they ran me about $12 for 50 and this is an, another kind of off brand that I it, they just had like a killer deal on Amazon uh, one day so I bought these without realizing they were a different size and um, I think it's important to note that I like them both for different reasons um, obviously if you're using a jar or especially a small jar when you put the neck cup in there um, when you're initially starting your seeds you're gonna fill the water up so it comes up about a quarter of an inch on your neck cup so that the seed stays wet and can germinate. And then as that plant grows and it sends roots down, it'll start drinking up the water and the nutrients and the water level through evaporation and through the plant um, using it, the water level starts to drop and that's what needs to happen because it creates an air pocket for the plant to breathe. If those roots stay submerged all the time, the plant will drown. So as you see the water level going down, that's a good thing and um, this neck cup hopefully you can see it leaves a, quite a bit of space in there but if i were to put this neck cup in there it's much less water that i can put in there so again it's just one of those things that is good to be aware of the deeper the neck cup the less water you're going to be able to put in there so i'll have links to both of these kind of neck cups uh, below because i do think there are pluses and minuses for both and I'll show you what I mean here. These are Root Riot um, grow plugs. I use Rapid Rooter a lot too. Rapid Rooter is probably my favorite, but again, Root Riot just had a, a great sale for a, a hundred pack of these. I think it was $27 for a hundred of them. And the Rapid Rooter are like $18 for 50. So these are identical in size to the Rapid Rooter. So no difference. Um, but when I put these in the neck cups, it might be kind of hard to see. In this neck cup, the Rapid Rooter plug or the Root Riot plug comes all the way up to the top. In this one, if you can see, it, it only comes up to about here. So there's, you know, uh, at least a half an inch of space there. And the reason I kind of prefer these deeper ones is I also put clay pebbles on top. So the clay pebbles keep the light from um, reaching the top of the rapid rooter plug so that there's no algae on top. Well, as you can see this one, if I put clay pebbles on top, they kind of spill over. So pluses and minuses with both. Um, and it's just something to be aware of. Either of them work just fine. The, um, one thing I will mention too, if you're going to go the shoebox route, which I, now prefer is this one I drilled three holes in, in in the lid to hold my neck cups. So I have three holes drilled in there and then I just pop my um, neck cups in there and I'll put, I'll put in the description what size that drill is. I think that hole saw is. I think it's two inches but it could be like one and seven eighths but I'll put that in the description. But um, something that you'll want to pay attention to is if you end up like me with a mixed batch of neck cups is that you might want to try to put the same size in each container. So if you see if I put this little short one in here, the, there's a difference in the depth. So when I fill this reservoir up, 
and you know, say I go by this one and this one's submerged a quarter of an inch underwater, this one's not even gonna touch. So this poor little plant is never gonna get a chance to grow if that water's not touching there. And conversely, if I fill it up to touch this one or you know, come up a half an inch on this net cup, these ones are gonna be really submerged and it could compromise any plants in there if um, the roots can't get exposed to air fast enough. The Kratky method developed by Dr. Benjamin Kratky um, does not use any kind of pump. So that this is just so incredibly simple. You can literally grow them in these mason jars and it is like once you plant that seed in there, you pretty much forget about it and uh, you're good to go. So let me show you, I'll get a container here that has some lettuce in it and I'll show you exactly what I mean. This lettuce was planted December 21st and it's been harvested several times. And what I mean by harvest is I pinch off the outside leaves, just like that. And then I leave the inside leaves to keep growing. It's kind of a cut and come again. As long as you don't pinch all the leaves off, it should keep producing for quite a while. So I just pinch these outside leaves, make salad, feed the pigs, whatever you're gonna do with those. And then the plant will keep producing for a while. Let me show you, here is the root system for this, these three plants. And the top portion, these are the roots that need oxygen. And it's these deeper roots that need the water and they pick up the nutrients as well. I still have some water and solution in here, or nutrient solution, and these plants are doing just fine. So when I planted them back in December and I popped my seeds inside, these have the clay pebbles, the clay pebbles to keep the light out. The water level was probably almost three quarters of the way full, and I stuck them on my shelf underneath some grow lights. My grow lights are set on a timer, just like this one. So they come on for 18 hours and then they're off for six hours and it's all preset. I just plug the lights right into that timer and it does its thing. I don't have to remember to turn them on. I don't have to remember to turn them off. I don't have to remember to water this. Within a month, these were ready to start harvesting. I didn't have to do anything. I mean, they, I still don't need to add water to these and it's literally, to me, a set it and forget it. So it's an incredibly easy way to grow lettuce. I like to keep things as simple as possible and just get great results from it. And that's what I hope that you can do too. So the nutrient solution I use is Texas tomato food. Again, I've been doing, I've been growing this lettuce for two years now and I bought this at that time, so uh, February 2020 is when I bought this. It's still at least half full. A little bit goes a long way. It was less than $35 for this, which seems like a lot. I mean, you know, $35 to buy a container of fertilizer, but, or nutrients, these are hydroponic nutrients. And you really wanna be specific about that when you're picking out and purchasing your um, Nutrient. But yeah, so this has lasted me two years so far. I imagine, I mean, if, if things keep going like they are, they'll last another two years, except I am probably doubling my um, growing here, but still pretty good return on investment. So the shoe boxes I use are Sterilite containers. They're six quarts, or I think they're called plastic shoe boxes. I did have to paint them. I recommend a high quality um, spray paint. I chose black just because I wanted them to be as dark as possible. Um, the lids are opaque, so you don't have to paint the lids, um, but just paint the exterior of the outside. I just purchased 40 of these, so four 10 packs, and it was less than $40, so I think it was about $37 with tax delivered to my door. Best price that I found right now is from walmart.com. I'll put a link below, but um, it was the best price. I don't have a problem using plastic because this is gonna last me a really long time. Um, for those of you concerned, you can always check the bottom of um, the container to make sure that it's food grade. And surprisingly, yes, those are food grade. I mentioned this plug-in timer. I use these for a lot of different things, but particularly for my grow lights, um, for the lettuce and they run about $9 a piece. This is a great 
one here because you can set it in 15 minute in increments. The other thing I have are um, my grow lights. If you know me, you know that I like things that are really good and not so expensive. And, and the Barina grow lights or Barina LED lights are um, by far the one that I see recommended the most. They're the ones that I use. I have probably at least four or five different sets now. I have the super bright LED 6500s. Those are probably, I think, they're 40 or $50 for six of them. I have two on each shelf, so I can do three shelves with um, one package. All right, guys, I am out in my little kind of feed room uh, where I like to do my planting too. This will be exactly step by step how I plant my seeds and then how I neglect them <laughs> just to show you exactly how easy it is. Okay, so what we're going to do here, I have my container ready. Of course, like I said, I spray painted it black, um, just the exterior, and then I used a hole saw and drilled three holes in this. What I like to do is take my net cups and go ahead and place them inside. And then um, I like to start adding my water. And since I'm not over the sink, I just have some jugs. And I place the net cups in there just so I can see the water level as it's filling up. You can see water in the bottom of these net cups. And like I said, you want it to be about a quarter of an inch or so deep to ensure that these little pods are going to be touching the water. They should be well into the water um, by, you know, a quarter of an inch or so. Um, but also just be mindful if you're reusing some of these and they're dry, uh, they might need a little bit extra water to absorb and expand. Uh, next thing I will do is my TDS measure. I'm going to see where I'm starting from. Like I said, I use tap water and it's hard water. So when I first turn this on, it will show zero parts per million, and then I'm going to stick the measure in my water. Okay, and if you can see that, it's at 137 parts per million, and that's just the plain water. Okay, so next I'm going to add the nutrients. So mine are liquid, so I shake them up really well, and then I have just found that a turkey baster works pretty well to kind of measure out small amounts 770 roughly 770 um, so if we subtract out the 130 uh, that the water originally was we're still within our frame our recommended uh, framework here so this is good to go next I'll get my uh, rapid rooter plugs ready and set in there and then we simply just take our seeds. Today I'm actually going to use some free seeds that I got um, to use them up. Seeds do have a bit of a shelf life, so you want to use them up and don't just save them. And then carefully, there's a hole in, top, in the top of these rapid rooter plugs. Um, and you just want to tap one or two seeds in there. I have found I get pretty good quality seeds, especially if I'm using my true leaf seeds, and um, so I can get away with planting one seed per hole. You could use a pencil or tweezers if you need to get that lined up. These um, lettuce seeds are brown, so it's really hard to see them going in the hole. Lastly, we will top these off with our clay pebbles, and that's just to keep the sunlight from hitting the top of these and making them full of algae. So the, don't worry, the little sprout will push itself through these. There's lots of air pockets uh, so that it can get through and it'll just add that much support. Okay, so I'm gonna do the um, mason jar one just so that it's a little bit easier to visualize. So let me get this. Oh, by the way, that's it. This is now gonna go on my shelf underneath the lights in my growing room and I'm not going to do anything until it's time to harvest some leaves. So that's literally all that I do um, to, to grow these hydroponically. Like I said, totally passive hydroponic system that I've had extreme success with. But let me show you here with the um, mason jar. So this is a one quart mason jar and like I said earlier, normally 
Uh, you would cover this with paper or a dark colored sock or you would paint it dark so that no light can get inside. But I'm leaving this one uncovered just so you have a better visual on um, how things line up in here. And I have the net cup inside and then the rapid rooter plug inside the net cup. And you can see how far down the um, net cup sits. So like I said, just like with the other method, I would just fill up my container with water. So the first step for me is just tap water, whatever kind of water you're using. And I need to make sure that the water level touches the bottom of the net pot. And I go up about a, a quarter of an inch. So hopefully you can see that this is submerged in the net cup. Then I would add my nutrients, and for a container this small, it would probably be about, I would start with like a half a teaspoon. Instead, a little bit of this tomato food goes a long way. Okay, now I'm at about 7.75, so that's a good range for our lettuce. I'm gonna put my net cup back in. Again, it is submerged. So when I put my rapid rooter plug in, it's able to wick up the water. And then just like before, I would add my seed and my clay pebbles. And this is one of the, the more shallow uh, net cups, so the clay pebbles kind of roll off a little. So that's it. So that net cup is just barely submerged in the water, maybe by a half of an inch or so, quarter of an inch, and as this little lettuce sprouts, it'll send roots down. The roots and natural evaporation will occur, and this water level is going to gradually start to drop, and that's a good thing. We want it to drop to create an air pocket here for the roots to breathe, and we're not going to top with the water because we will drown the plant, so we want to let that water level drop you'll see the plant grow nicely and only if it gets super low like dangerously low that this plant might run out of water would we ever add more and that's it like I said this would just go also into the grow room um, again it would be covered um, but that's it passive hydroponics I hope this video showed how easy it can be to grow your own lettuce year-round indoors wherever you're at without any special equipment. Be sure to check out my other videos on the Cracky Method and if you're so inclined hit that subscribe button and the little bell for notifications when I load up another video. We'll see you soon.